Whether you're on board with the idea or not, human explorers have set a course for Mars. Taking that next giant leap for mankind, putting the first human footprint on the red planet will cost hundreds of billions of dollars. Does spending that kind of cash to become a multi-planet species seem like a good idea to you? Well, imagine if we could go there and in the process, take some of the pressure off our polluted, climate-challenged planet. Earth certainly needs our help. And of course, we should do everything we can. And the way some people see it, that includes going to Mars. Plus, reaching out to Mars is one of the things that makes us fundamentally human. At our core, we humans are all about exploring the unknown. Earth and Mars are kind of like siblings, born around the same time, but growing up very differently. The trip to visit Earth's older sibling will take about six months. Once there, what will we find? Well, Martian gravity is just over one third of what it is here on Earth. So we'll be able to lift more and bounce around. One Martian day is basically as long as one day on Earth, but the average temperature is minus 63 degrees Celsius. So bring a sweater. And of course, there's no air to breathe. It will be difficult, it will be expensive, yet the drive to go has been relentless. NASA wants to send people to Mars in the late 2030s. Its previous unmanned missions have cost billions of dollars. One of the richest men on planet Earth, Elon Musk, and his company SpaceX hope to do it even sooner, before the end of the decade. There are a couple of ways of achieving that. One requires a moon base to test what it's like to live and work, to survive in an unfamiliar and hostile environment. The United States is planning for one, with a mission to the moon scheduled for 2025. So are China and Russia, working together on a joint base. And that's because as much as space exploration is about the ideal of human discovery, here on Earth, it's also very much about the balance of power. Whoever gets their base up and running first gets first crack at valuable lunar resources. Another way of getting to Mars requires a billionaire, like Musk and his ideas for a self-sustaining colony. Right now, it costs $1 billion per ton to fly stuff to Mars, Musk says, but that needs to drop to a million dollars a ton, and preferably much less. But even if they can push costs down, Musk's plan will still cost a trillion dollars. I know what you're thinking. A trillion dollars could buy a lot of solar panels and wind turbines here on Earth. But here's the thing. Even if we canceled all the space programs tomorrow, there's no reason to think that the money saved will be put towards saving our home planet. Saving the planet isn't about money. It's about political will. And as one climate conference after another has shown us, politicians are long on talk, but short on action. In the end, the goal of putting people on Mars shouldn't be about replacing planet A, Earth, with planet B, Mars. The goal ought to be to push ourselves to discover the unknown. And in the process of scientific discovery, we may actually find ways of saving planet A.